Hello there. Welcome to Just the Discs. We talk about Blu-rays here. My name is Brian, and today we are talking about Fun City Editions, uh, my favorite of the Vinegar Syndrome partner labels, and there are lots of great partner labels to check out with a plethora, to say the least, of amazing and interesting releases every month. But uh, we're going to focus on Fun City. Uh, as I've said on the channel before, they've been just doing great work, just really consistently finding the gems and doing a great job with the presentation and the features. And um, I mentioned this title in my sort of unboxing of the July package for Vinegar Syndrome, but I wanted to go a little deeper. Um, I've had a chance to check it out, and that is uh, Heartbreakers. This is from 1984. Bobby Roth's film, and it is a really special movie. Um, it is one that I had seen before, but only in, I think I might have mentioned, in a sort of a VHS rip kind of format, because the physical release history with this film has been a little spotty, you know, since VHS, and so this version is so much better and really presents the film in a way that I hope that a lot of people will get to check it out because it's such a nice job in terms of how it's put together and um, I really dig this movie it's a really interesting movie it's definitely an off Hollywood movie and by that I mean it doesn't do the things you might expect it to do uh, it's basically the story of two friends, two guys in Los Angeles, and one of them is an artist uh, played by Peter Coyote. He works as a printer during the day or night, and the other is a businessman uh, who sort of inherited his dad's female of women's clothing, clothing business, and that's played by Nick Mancuso, who I'm a big fan of, and I talked about both of them in the July unboxing video that I did, but big fan of both actors, and these are two of my favorite performances from both. Uh, but, you know, I myself have used the word bromance with this film, but I kind of want to walk that back just a little bit because, I mean, yes, you can use that word to describe this movie, but I would really say the movie is about male friendship in a way that. I don't think I've ever seen it explored quite like this. You know, the movie opens with our two main characters playing racquetball together. Then uh, we see them in the locker room. They're combing their hair. They're sharing a comb. They are both checking out some girls doing aerobics in the aerobics class together and kind of looking at each other. These are really good friends, really close. You know, uh, and it's not meant to be anything more than friendship, you know? I mean, they just really care for each other. And that is all it has to be. And the way that it plays out and the complicated nature of this relationship, the relationship between other people in the movie, men and women, is very complex and messy. And I think that's one of the things I really respond to seeing this now for the second or third time. Um, but so, okay, the idea is that the Peter Coyote character is a little restless. He's been working on a series of paintings uh, based on um, Betty Page. So they're like, he has hired a woman to uh, pose for him and it's sort of like lingerie... Uh, and she's played by Carol Wayne and a really nice performance from Carol Wayne. Um, so she poses for him in like lingerie. He paints her into these sort of pinup style paintings, you know, very sexy stuff. Uh, Nick Mancuso's character at one point comments that it may be like too sexy, maybe, maybe the kind of thing that people don't want to hang in their homes. Um, but anyway, he's doing this sort of on the side. He's a, he works in a printing uh, place as his real gig. And so one of the, I'm just going to give away just this one scene because I really think 
it epitomizes the relationship and also is a scene like I've almost never seen in another movie, certainly not an American film, wherein Peter Coyote's character just decides, you know what, I quit. I'm done with this printing business stuff. I'm going to... I'm gonna, I need a change, and whether that means going all in on his art or whatever, that's what he's going to do. So he makes this decision, and he wants to tell his buddy about it. So he goes over to Nick Mancuso's house. Uh, the Peter Coyote character lives in a pretty nice L.A. artist loft. There's actually some really neat artist lofts that you get to see and some other cool locations in L.A., but um, Peter Coyote lives there. Nick Mancuso lives in a pretty nice house in the Hollywood Hills, he goes to the door, he, you know, s- tries to knock and ring the bell, nobody's home. He jumps over, there's sort of a gate, and and basically breaks into Nick Mancuso's house. So he's wandering around Nick Mancuso's house, goes upstairs to his bedroom, It's kind of just looking around at his stuff, you know, obviously he's been there before. And suddenly Nick Mancuso's character and a woman come into the house. And it's clear that they've been on a date. And they are at a point where they're getting kind of frisky with each other. They have a little conversation and eventually they head up to the bedroom to ostensibly have sex. And Nick Mancuso's character is laying her down on the bed. And just as he does that, he looks up and finally notices that Peter Coyote's character is sitting on the bed. And that's a weird moment. And that kind of moment you may have seen in another movie, okay? And and that usually is you know, responded to with incredible, like, what the heck is going, what are you doing here? What is, how did you get in my house? What are you, this is, you're crossing the line. All kinds of responses we've seen in other movies. So there is an initial sort of, what are you doing here from the Nick Van Cuso character, but then Peter Coyote is immediately, immediately like, I quit my job today. And it totally undercuts any response that the Mancuso character would have. It immediately makes him go, wait, what? And so the woman who's got her shirt open, she's sitting next to them on the bed is now, and who's not upset either, and and vaguely not that surprised to see the Peter Coyote character on the bed. She's now like, what is he talking about? And then they, they get into this deeper conversation about what do you, what's this about? What happened? And so they have a moment and it just, everything stops down and it becomes like clear that like, this is a bigger deal than what was going to happen with this woman to him that he just figures out what's going on with his friend. And he says, you know what, let's go to Fat Burger, which is a sort of a local LA uh, burger chain, which is still around. So they go to Fat Burger to talk about this. And the woman, you know, comes with and they're all talking about life and, you know, job stuff and everything. And it's just like such an interesting situation to see it play out that way. And that's just one example I'm going to give of a movie like this doing something different than I expected or not like anything I've ever seen. And it also really speaks to the depth of the friendship that they have. And, you know, so there's a lot more complicated stuff that happens. The Peter Coyote character is living with uh, Catherine Harold, who I'm a huge fan of. Um, That's his girlfriend and they're having trouble because he's not happy and he's making her unhappy. Um, and there's another artist that she's friends with that, you know, things get complicated there too. Um, so there's a lot of personal drama. It's really about, you know, finding your way and finding what you want to do with your life and, you know, supporting your friends and, and it, I don't know, but it's a really great performance. Like I said, by both the leads, everybody's great. Um, probably my favorite Peter Coyote performance ever you know um it's one of those kind of unpredictable angry offbeat characters manic that you dig or you don't that kind of thing um and so it's it's a really cool movie like just a movie that i i think will surprise a lot of people and it's another one that i just really appreciate has been you know, presented here, chosen, curated um, by Fun City Editions. And uh, like I think I said, a great L.A. movie, great look at the L.A. art scene at the time. Um, cool L.A. locations. They recreated a, a shop, coffee shop slash diner called Duke's, which I 
think was in Santa Monica, and they put this new version of it in West Hollywood. You see the Fat Burger. You see some other L.A. locations. Um, but overall, the film walks this really incredible tonal tightrope between funny and moving and intense, back to funny and moving. Um, so it's and, and and again, the the structure of it is not like your conv- conventional three act. It's it's very much coming from a personal place, and that's sort of covered in the uh, extra features, which I'll talk about in a second here. But that said, other things to note. Shot by Michael Ballhaus, one of the great cinematographers ever. Uh, obviously worked with Fassbender, worked extensively with Scorsese, you know, shot Goodfellas, Age of Innocence, I mean, tons of stuff. Just one of the greats, After Hours. Um, one of the true great cinematographers, and it really elevates the movie. It really makes a big difference. And one of the things that, there's a Bobby Roth interview I'll maybe sneak into here for a second that he talks about in that interview is that when he was able to get Ballhouse, it was, I want to say the way he said it was, it was sort of Ballhouse's first time in LA or first real time in LA. And so what you're seeing is a cinematographer with a great eye who's finding a way to shoot a city that he's never really been in before from almost an outsider perspective. And that on top of the, his ability to incredibly, you know, frame and light really brings a great um, take on LA, you know, through just the cinematography. It's also got a very cool Tangerine Dream score, which is always a plus. I love their music. I wish they had done more movies. Um, There's also an isolated track on here. You can listen to that that way. And so big plus for both of those things, right? Okay. So this is our nice slip cover. That's basically one of the pinups there on the back. Here is our original cover. As you can see there now, 2K restoration from its 35 millimeter inner positive. Uh, Pieces of My my Life, a newly filmed video interview with director Bobby Roth, Mr. Amour and The Outsider, newly filmed video interviews with stars Peter Coyote and Nick Mancuso, video introduction by director Bobby Roth, uh, isolated music track, Booklet with new essays from DJ and journalist Margaret, Margaret Barton Fumo and film historian Richard Harlan Smith. Um, big fan of Richard Harlan Smith. Uh, definitely looking forward. I haven't had a chance to read his essay yet, but um, a lovely booklet here included as uh, Fun City always does it right. Uh, and last but definitely not least, uh, a newly recorded audio commentary by filmmaker Chris O'Neill, who's done a lot of the video essays for Fun City, uh, and my friend Bill Ackerman of the Supporting Characters podcast, who I think is one of the great commentators on Blu-rays, just really does a lot of great research. If you listen to Supporting Characters, you get a sense of just how much research he does before he talks to anyone, and you'll get a sense how much research he would do for a commentary before he does it. So, um... It's a great little track. Uh, But let me just go through these things one at a time. So the Bobby Roth interview, 35 minutes, called Pieces of My Life. It's it's a really neat interview. He talks about his way into Hollywood, which is sort of an unconventional road in. He talks about the personal stuff in Heartbreakers um, and and a personal cinema in general that he believes in, in terms of bringing stuff with his family his sort of family interactions and friendships into the film. Um, And uh, so it's, like I said, it's based a lot on his life and situations. He talks about the influence of Bertrand Blyer's films, things like Get Out Your Handkerchiefs with Carol Lohr, who is actually also in the movie. She plays uh, this woman who works in an art gallery, gallery that Peter Coyote gets hooked up with. She's very good in the film feels like she was probably cast because of that. Uh, so it's Get Out Your Handkerchiefs and Going Places, which both really need nice Blu-rays, by the way. And both are movies about male friendships. And th- you can definitely see, if you've seen either Get Out Your t- Handkerchiefs or Going Places, which I like, um, you can totally see how they're similar to this kind of movie. And if you like those, I think you'll like this. Um he talks about how Heartbreakers was part of a thing he's tried to do, c- confessionary or 
confessional cinema. Uh, again, that sort of incorporates you know things about his life, and again talking about Michael Ballhaus um, and Ballhaus finding things about shooting L.A. that other people might take for granted. Uh, so it's a really nice interview. He's obviously very excited and happy to have this film, which you know he's very proud of, rightfully, on Blu-ray in this wonderful format. So it's just a good vibes kind of interview throughout. Really enjoyed that. The um, Peter Coyote Mancuso interview is about 20 minutes. I think they're both over Zoom, um, but it's it that cool thing where they're intermingling the two of them, sort of back and forth. Uh, a little bit of commenting on each other's, you know, things that each other are saying, but both kind of giving their ways into acting. And um, Coyote has a really interesting way in, more of a counterculture guy who ended up trying out acting than a guy who really was, you know, determined to do it from the get-go. Um, he gave himself like five years to give it a go and, and this whole thing. It's a great story. Like really enjoyed both these guys talking. Uh, and apparently Coyote, I think this comes up in the Bobby Roth too, wasn't the first pick for the movie. The guy they picked, which was never really named, um, became a little bit problematic in that he wanted his girlfriend cast in the movie. And ultimately that was not something Bobby Roth wanted to do. And Peter Coyote had already been cast as an alt, another character, and I, I'm blanking on which one, but he ended up letting that guy go and just letting Coyote take the artist character. He's called Blue in the movie, and obviously a great choice. I really think he does an incredible job with it. Um, they talk about their, you know, recollections from this movie. Uh, again, Nick Van Cuso also talks about his way into acting. Uh, but they're just really laid back gentlemen and um, sort of offbeat guys. And I really appreciated hearing their stories. It's inspirational in that way to not hear the same old stories you hear. And not that there's anything wrong with those, but these guys clearly are coming at it from a different point of view. And, and um, I really enjoyed them. So good stuff. 20 minutes there. Uh, the Bill Ackerman, Chris uh, O'Neill commentary really nice they play off each other well as a duo um and there's a lot of references to the original script versus the final film that's noted a lot which is intriguing to hear you know like some things that were changed or adjusted um they talk about casting they talk about locations there's a lot of detail and a lot of research that's gone into this track but it's also very conversational and has a nice flow and I really dug it. So um, kudos to both Bill Ackerman and Chris O'Neill for a nice track. Um, and then, of course, the isolated Tangerine Dream score track as well. So uh, a big thumbs up for Heartbreakers from me. Highly recommended. It, the transfer looks really good. Um, I've, like, obviously, I'm coming from a VHS rip, so it, it's, it's going to look better than that. But there's a lot of neons, a lot of colors, a lot of you know really well and interestingly lit shots and this transfer does it incredible justice and I thought it looked great. So that's Heartbreakers. Um, just as a brief preview, I wanted to talk momentarily about Natural Enemies, which is the next release uh, from Fun City. Uh, and this one is from director Jeff Canoe. This is the inside cover there. Uh, director Jeff Canoe, it's his narrative feature debut. He had done a documentary previous to this. He, this is the director of things like Gotcha and Revenge of the Nerds. And when you watch this movie, there's no way that you will be able to tell this is the same guy because this film is really intense. Um, it's it's uh, It stars Hal Holbrook and... Uh, uh, as you can see on the back here, Louise Fletcher, and it's about a man in crisis. And I'm going to go a little deeper into it in an, another review, but I just wanted to point out what you're getting with this. And this is another gem of a movie. It's it's a bleak movie, uh, downbeat, but very powerful, and the performance by Hal Holbrook is stunning. Really incredible stuff. And like I said, from the director of Gotcha and Revenge of the Nerds, it's pretty, you know, powerful as a debut feature film. 
Um, but just as a backup, like this is another movie that wasn't really available on uh, DVD at all and just is out there, you know, had been out there in like VHS rips. Uh, so you have a new 2K restoration from a 35 millimeter deposit print held on the li- at the Library of Congress, which looks good. It has a decent amount of grain to it. Certainly the best this film has and will ever look. And that is really saying something because this film is, to me, kind of a lost movie. Um, and this one has The Road to Natural Enemies, enemies a newly filmed two-part video interview with director Jeff Canoe, who's a director I like very much. If you listen to the commentary on Gotcha, I think he's done some other commentary tracks like V.I. Warshawski. Um, he's a laid-back guy, but a guy that I enjoy hearing him talk about his process and, you know, just seems like a fun, uh, nice guy. So two part interview with him. I'm looking forward to digging into that video introduction by Jeff Canoe. Oh, there's also a video introduction to heartbreakers by Bobby Roth. I should have mentioned as one of the other features, um, an alternate ending and a booklet with a new essay by Jason Bailey from fun city cinema podcast. And then Bill Ackerman is back, a newly recorded audio commentary with Bill Ackerman of Supporting Characters. So there's a lot for me to dig into with this, but I just wanted to give a preview of um, this new one. Uh, I've just had a chance to... I've seen the movie. Um, I like the movie. It is, like I said, very intense, but I'm looking forward to digging into all the special features and such um, that Fun City has brought to this film. So two gems from Fun City and Heartbreakers and Natural Enemies. Um, That's all I got for today. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.